Here's an example of using elimination and back substitution where we get a non-unique solution. Uh, and so we're going to have to deal with how to write down multiple solutions. So the first thing we'll do is we'll use this 6x to kill the 9x. So the simplest way to do that is probably take 3 times that first equation, that'll begin 18, and subtract off 2 times the second equation, that'll subtract off an 18 and kill it. That'll be the new 2. So let's do that. And the way I'm going to do that to make it as unlikely as uh, likely as possible to get the right answer is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply by a negative and add. So this is going to be 18x minus 6y plus 24z, multiplying that by 3, equals 0. That doesn't change, of course. And then this one, oops, let's copy that over. And I'm going to multiply it by minus 2. So minus 18x minus 6y minus 30z equals minus 18. And now I'm going to add those together. So I certainly get 0x, which I need to do for this to work. That's why I did it that way. Minus 12y, they don't cancel because I'm adding. Minus 6z equals minus 18. OK, so that's the new version of equation 2. Oh, let's so remember, oh, shoot. the way we do this is uh, yeah, I know that. Okay, we recopy the system. We recopy the first one, the first equation, unchanged, and then this new version of equation two goes in here, and then I also need a new version of equation three. Okay, well let's look at the scratch work for that. That's going to be um, let's take just the equation one unmodified and subtract off two times equation three. That'll be the new equation three. Okay, so let's bring in equation one. That's our tool once again. Equation three, I'll copy it over, but then immediately multiply it by minus two, and I'll add. So that's going to be plus 18y. And this isn't syncing up real well. There we go. And then multiply it by minus two. That's going to be 24. Add them up. Of course, I get 0x. I get plus 16y. Notice the 0z that I had there is no longer 0. That's life. And 24. OK. And so that is going to be our new equation 3. What we've accomplished there is we've got now a 2 by 2 system. Solving for y and z will just be amount to solving a 2 by 2 system. That's a definitely an easier task than solving the original 3 by 3 system. OK, so let's go ahead and get ready for that. I'm still going to need these for back substitution, so I put them in. But I'm not going to modify them anymore. The only thing I need to modify is that last equation. And here's where the interesting stuff happens, given that it's a, the non-unique solution case. Now I'm going to take that equation 2 as my tool. I don't want to use equation 1 as a tool, because it's got a, a non-zero x coefficient. That would just screw up all the good work we did already with zeroing out the x's. I use equation 2 as my tool, but let's see. I've got to play off a 12 against a 16. So I'm going to have to take 4 times that to get 48. And they're already opposite signs, so I'm going to add 3 times the 3 to get a new 3. OK. Now let's see what happens. You might be able to guess by looking at some patterns there, although it's not super obvious with this example. So we're going to take this guy. That's our tool. But we're going to go ahead and multiply it by 4. And that's a 72. Then we're going to bring in this guy, which is what we want to work on. Multiply it by 3, so the 48, that's going to match. That's crucial. 24, that's interesting. That matches. And oh, that matches. And I'm going to add them together. Oh my goodness, that's going to be 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0. Now the point of this is not that I've just derived 0 equals 0 as an interesting mathematical statement. It's also not, I mentioned this in, in class, it's not saying that when, if I ever, 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 with any kind of weird random method I do to analyze these equations, if I ever find 0 equals 0, I have a certain, a certain knowledge about what's going on. That's not true. But if I'm doing this particular method of putting it in triangular form, then, and I get 0 equals 0 as this last equation, I actually do know something. Because it's telling me z can be set to anything. 
And the reason z is special here is that right from the start, I eliminated x first and then y, and then I expected z to have a value. We broke the possible symmetry of the system between x and y and z right at the start by choosing this method to work on. And so this is, um, it's a little artificial to say z is the free variable, which is the, the terminology people use. But it's the free variable of our choice in this problem. So the way we deal with that is we say, OK, this is telling me nothing about what z had to be. I was expecting a value. And so I'm just going to say z equals t. And that's just going to be a, um, a code for it can be anything we want. I'm going to use another letter for it to emphasize that it's not, it has a special role here. It's not something that we expect to have a value. We now know it's anything. And it's a little bit of a weird code, but it actually turns out to be a very useful thing to do to give it another letter. And then I just do back substitution, as I would ordinarily do, but t is going to appear everywhere. So minus 12y minus 6t equals minus 18. You know what? I can simplify that. I can take out a, si a minus 6. So it's just 2y plus t equals 3, or 2y equals 3 minus t, or y equals 3 halves minus t over 2. OK? And then the x equation. You can see it just right at the top here. Let's just copy that in so I don't get it wrong. OK, and now it's a little complicated. We've just got to put in everywhere we see a, a y, we figured out that's this expression in terms of t. Oh, I don't need to dot that. That was kind of fun. And then z, of course, is just t. OK, so let's simplify that. 6x minus uh, the 2 cancel, so that's 3 and then plus t plus a t equals 0, or 6x uh, equals 3 minus 9 t, looks like. Hmm? Yep. And so x is 1 half minus 3 halves t. And so if I want to write it as a triple, it's not just x, y, z is some definite thing. It's x, y, z is anything you can create with these instructions. Let me put two commas in. Let z be anything, call it t. Make sure that once you've picked that, you make y equal to 3 halves minus that thing over 2, and make x equal 1 half minus 3 halves times that thing that you picked. Call it t. And so that is a very precise description. If I can write something in this way, it will be a solution. If it's a solution, I must be able to write it in this way. And so it's a very explicit description of the solution set. And let me uh, reiterate something I said in class. If you just say, there are an infinite number of solutions, I'm done. That's not nearly a complete uh, answer to this problem. We, we need to get to this very explicit description of the solution set, I should say, because it's a whole set of solutions. Okay.